love you. Parrots have an uncanny ability to mimic human speech. What did you do if you got a peanut? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! But do they really understand what they're saying? According to one scientist, this parrot, Griffin, can. What do you want? You want to go back? You want to go back? Okay. It's a controversial claim. If it's true, it will force us to think again about these bird brain creatures. Parrots have been kept as pets for thousands of years. Even Henry VIII had one. Hello. 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 What's your name? Their owners say that parrots behave like eternal toddlers. I can see you. But they can live to the ripe old age of 60, and many wise old birds are full of useful advice. A bird in the hunt is one tree in the bush. Many parrots have been forced to swap their natural habitat for the concrete jungle. Here, we can see their extraordinary talent for mimicry, copying the calls of local birds. and predators. This parrot has even mastered the calls of the greater spotted London builder. In spite of this extraordinary ability to mimic the sounds around them, we still think of parrots as simple creatures. The phrase, Parrot fashion means learning without understanding. But one African gray parrot will change our view of these feathered creatures forever. Meet Griffin, the star of the avian learning experiment. An experiment to prove that parrots are capable of more than just parroting. Griffin's human partner in the experiment is Dr. Irene Pepperberg. We started to establish a two-way communication system with a bird that would allow us then to use that system to examine his intelligence. Through this two-way communication with Griffin, Dr. Pepperberg is unlocking the secrets of the bird brain and showing just how much a parrot can understand. Hi, hi, sweet. Hi. For the past 12 years, Griffin and Dr. Pepperberg have worked together. Let's go check an email first, okay? Can we go check email first? Yeah, yeah. Griffin is a little bit cautious, a little bit watchful. Griffin is an academic bird who doesn't mince his words. What do you want? You want to go back? You want to go back? Okay. He means what he says, and he says what he means. We're going to do some matter, okay? Tell me what matter. Paper. Paper, that's right. Good birdie. There you go. Dr. Pepperberg's simplified language uses the minimum number of words possible. So instead of asking, what is this made of, she asks... What matter? Woo! Good boy! Griffin can also understand abstract concepts and even has the ability to use numbers. Now listen. How many? Four is right, good boy. But Griffin has plenty of competition for the title of genius parrot. His main rival has flown in from Tennessee to give a special performance at a top Boston nursery school. Would you like to hear her talk? Yeah. Can you tell everybody your name? Einstein. This is Einstein. Now, Einstein, can you tell everybody hi? Hi. That's nice. So can you be more polite? Yes, sweetheart. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> Irene has come to see Einstein firsthand because she's heard of her impressive vocal abilities. Now, Einstein just took a trip all around the world. Well, in Africa, there's a lot of chimpanzees. You do a chimpanzee? <laughs> How about a pig? <laughs> what about one that needs to go on a diet? <laughs> <laughs> Can you sing? <laughs> Even though Einstein's ability to mimic is impressive, Irene still thinks that Griffin is top of the class when it comes to comprehension. The amazing ability of these birds to talk has led to a flurry of research activity with one scientist suggesting it's all about sex appeal. Let me tell you how I 
Einstein is able to mimic sounds. At the zoo, we don't have any dogs around Einstein, so in order for her to make the sound of a dog, I have to sit and bark like a dog all day long. So I'll go ruff, 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 like a dog, and if she likes that sound, she'll start to bark like a dog too. And that's when I give her some seeds and then put it on the word dog. So when I say the word dog and bark, she'll bark. Can you bark? Can you bark? Ruff, ruff. Through her work with Griffin, Irene believes that parrots do have the capability to understand. What matter? Paper. Paper, good parrot. Recent studies have revealed that this language ability is because both parrots and human brains have similar connections. But one question remains. Do parrots understand the words they've learned to repeat? For the last 30 years, Dr. Irene Pepperberg has been trying to find a definitive answer. She has developed a special way of training the parrots so they don't simply learn to repeat a word, but hopefully learn its meaning too. What color? Good boy! But for any student, there's always plenty to learn. Tell me what number? No, what number? No, what number? No. Okay, maybe we'll bring a student in and we'll do show some modeling of how we teach you your numbers. How would that be? Okay? Irene uses what's called the model rival technique. Parents get very attached to their owners and very jealous when they're ignored. The model shows Griffin what the right answer is, but they are also the rival for Irene's attention. What number? Eight. Eight, you're right, you get the eight. Eight. Birds are watching this weird noise as mediated transfer of object. This is something they pay attention to. What number? Uh. No. So we show the bird that not any weird noise means transfer the object. And then I get another chance and I get it correct. What number? Eight. 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 Oh, eight. 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 Oh, it's fun, it's an eight. Do you remember eight? To win Irene's attention what back, number? Griffin must answer the question correctly. Dr. Pepperberg's research began 30 years ago with a parrot called Alex. They're a good boy. Over the years, Alex picked up over 100 words and could clearly understand concepts of color, number, and shape. What is it? Rock. Good boy. Yeah, That's good right. Birdie. Alex, what toy? Nail. Nail, that's right, you're a good birdie. What color? Yellow. But sadly, Irene's 30-year collaboration with Alex came to an abrupt end. Okay, you be good. You be good. Okay, I'll be in tomorrow. I'll see you then. After their normal routine of study and play, Irene put Alex into his cage for the night. I love you. These would be the last words she would hear from her fellow researcher. The night of September 6th, unfortunately, he became as the Monty Python skit says, an ex-parrot. Stories about Alex's sad demise appeared on national television and in papers across the globe. He had a, his obituary in The Economist, which is, you know, unheard of for an animal. With Alex, Irene had clearly demonstrated that a parrot could not just repeat, but also understand abstract concepts. We don't know if Alex is unique or not. We doubt it. Um, he really was an off-the-shelf parrot. But for 15 years, he was an only parrot. And people were with him, you know, 8 to 12 hours a day, treating him as you would a toddler. But talking to him, describing what they were doing, labeling everything they handed him. Well, the work with Alex really made us redefine the way we think of the term bird brain. Irene's critics have suggested that perhaps Alex was a freak of nature, and to really prove her research, she will have to repeat her findings with another bird. So now Griffin has a chance to prove not just his own intelligence, but to stand up for the intelligence of all African gray parrots. And already, at the tender age of 12, he has mastered many of the key concepts in Irene's training program. Griffin has proved he has the capability of a three-year-old child. Impressive for an animal with a brain the size of a walnut. Griffin has held his own against the nursery school children and by proving his intelligence, made a stand for his whole species. <laughs>